Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm going to be doing Cambridge Primary Checkpoint for Mathematics Paper 2, April 2016. You're allowed to use calculators. Let's start. Question 1. The clock shows the time Alan arrives at school one morning. Take the digital clock that shows this time. So as you can see, it's 10, and over here it points just before 2, which means 10 over 9. So the answer is the fourth option. Question two, the other thing is that all the lengths are less than half a meter. So half a meter is 50 centimeters. So whichever are less than that are two, 43 and 26 centimeters. That's the answer. Question three, find the missing numbers. Dash divided by 12 equals 27. Bring this 12 to the other side. 27 into 12 is equal to that 324. That's the answer. And now for B, 16 into dash 384, bring 16 to the other side, 384 by 16. And when we do that, we get the answer 24. Question 4. This pictogram shows how many cups of juice were sold in a day. So one pictorial cup represents five actual cups. A, how many cups of apple juice were sold? So that's 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 multiplied by 5, that's 35 cups. B. How many more cups of orange were sold than mango? So orange was 10 cups, which is 50 over here. Mango is 2 cups, which is 10 over here. So 50 minus 10, which is 40 cups more. Question 5. A doll's house is 1 eighth the size of a real house. The length of the doll's house is 1.5 meters. How long is the real house? 1.5 multiplied by 8, that's equal to 12 meters. Question 6. The numbers on each side of the triangle add up to 120. Use four different multiples of 10 to complete the diagram. So we can say 40, and we add 20 and 60. And then 60 plus 10 plus 50. And then 50 plus 30 plus 40. 120, 120, 120. Question 7. Four children share three cake equally. How much cake will one child get? So that'll be three by four. <laughs> That's it, pretty much. Three cakes, four children. So one child will get three by four a cake. That's my answer. Question eight. Here are four digit cards. Use each card once to complete the calculation. Dash point dash plus dash point dash is equal to ten. Over here, something plus something must be equal to zero. Because if you have two points, and then out of sudden when we add them together, two decimal numbers, we get a whole number. That means the decimal digits must add up to 10 or 20 or something like that. They must add up to 10 in this case. So that means it'll be 0 0.4, 0 0.6. And you can put the other two wherever you want, 7.4, 2.6, I'm writing. You can write 2.4, 7.6, it doesn't matter. One of these is correct. Question nine. A bottle of orange juice contains 230 milliliters. Two of these bottles are poured into this jug. Draw an arrow to show the level of juice in the jug. So, two bottles means 230 into 2, which is 460 milliliters. So, 460 milliliters. This is 450 because it's in the middle of 400, 500. 460 will just be above there. So, I'll draw an arrow just over there. Question 10. Here are some statements about odd and even numbers. Take the correct box next to each statement. The first has been done for you. Odd plus odd equals odd. Not true because let's say 3, 5. Two odd numbers. When we add, you get 8, which is even. Even minus odd equals even. This is also not true because let's take 6 minus 3. 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. And that's odd, but not even. Odd into even is even. True. When we take any even number and any odd number, whenever we multiply, for example, 3 into 2, 6. 6 is even number. 3 into 4, 12. 12 is even number. So, well, it's true. You can take it for any combination of odd and even number. Question 11. There are 34 balloons in the pack. Sharifa has two packs. Kimi and Neera share a pack equally. How many balloons does each child have? So Sharifa has 34 into 2, which is 68 balloons. Kimi has half of the pack, which is 34 divided by 2, 17 balloons. Neither also has 17 balloons. 
because they share the pack equally. Question 12. Look at the three rectangles. Which rectangle has the largest area? Show calculations to explain the answer. So rectangle A has 7 into 4, 28 centimeters square. Rectangle B is 2 into 12, which is equal to 24 centimeters square. Rectangle C is equal to 3 into 9, which is equal to 27 centimeters square. And over here, rectangle A has the highest. So that's the answer. Question 13. Here's a recipe for chocolate milkshake. A. Ron makes enough milkshake for six people. Remember, in this diagram, it serves, serves two people. How much melted chocolate does he need? So, two into three is six, so we need to multiply everything here three times. Multiply by three, and we get how much for six people. How much melted chocolate? 30 into three, which is equal to 90 milliliters. That's the answer. B. Ron has 600 milliliters of milkshake left. How much ice cream does it contain? 400 milliliters has two scoops of ice cream. So 200 milliliters is one scoop. And that means multiply both sides by three. 600 milliliters is equal to three scoops. So answer is three. Question 14. Draw a ring around the square number. Over here, None of them are square numbers except for 36, because 36 is 6 into 6, or 6 squared. Question 15. Look at the diagram. A. Calculate the size of angle A. That's equal to 180 minus 45, which is equal to 135 degrees. B. Calculate the size of angle B. So that will be 180 minus 45 minus 78, which is equal to 57 degrees. That's the answer. Question 16. Put one of these signs into each box to make the calculation correct. Equals greater than or less than. 4 into 5 dash 3 into 8. So there's 20, 24. So there should be this. 13 into 17 dash 15 into 15. This is 221 and this is 225. That's why this is larger. So we can do this again. 256 divided by 8 dash 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9. 256 divided by 8 is 32. 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9, 30. And 32 is greater than 30, so we have a greater than sign. Question 17. Calculate 158 by 5. A. Give your answer as a decimal. So that's, we just do it like this. We get quotient 31, and then it'll be remained at 3 by 5. We just divide by 5, so we get 0. 0.6. 31.6. The right as a mixed number, 31, 3 by 5, as I just showed. Question 18. Write the missing number in the box. 37.5 into 6 is equal to 25 into dash. 37.5 is 3 by 2 multiplied by 25. So, when we do this, that means 3 by 2 into 25 into 6 is equal to 25 into dash. So, cancel the 25s. 3 by 2 into 6, which is 9. Question 19. Here are four calculations. These are the calculations. A. Which one gives the largest answer? Let's go to our calculator to find out the answers for these. 16.4 into 3.3, 54.12. Just write that. Now, 140.643, divided by 2.7, 52.09, 167.36, 1 divided by 3.2, it's equal to 52.3. 17.6 into 3, 52.8. So the largest answer will be 54.12, which is got by 16.4 into 3.3. Remember, we only write the calculation. We don't write the full answer. 16.4 into 3.3. Now, which calculation gives the smallest answer? That smallest answer is 52.09. And that's given by 140.643 divided by 2.7. That's the answer. Let's go to question 20. Question 20. The table shows the population of a small town by age. So the age range and the number of people are given for each one. The bar chart shows the same information. Label the bar chart. So the age range is on the horizontal place. Number of people is vertical. So, I'll write the age range. 
0 to 19, 20 to 39, 40 to 59, 60 to 79, and 80 plus. Now, this thing here is the label for number of people. So the top is 8,500. That's equal to 8 plus half bars. So that means one bar will be equal to 1,000 people. So 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, and 10,000. Question 21. Here's the part of a bus timetable. A. Mr. Hassan travels from Fentown to Leadtown. He catches the 838 bus. How long will his journey last? Give units with the answer. It takes from 838 to 1011. We just subtract. 09, 71. And when we subtract there, we get 33 minutes and one hour. So, one hour, 33 minutes. B. Mr. Sa lives in Kipstock and needs to be in Pentwell by 11.35. What's the latest bus that she can catch from Kipstock? So, before 11.35, she has to be there. So, the latest time she can be at Pentwell, 11.05. She can catch the 10.38 bus. Question 22. The product of two prime numbers is 39. P what are these two numbers? 13 multiplied by 3. So 13 into 3 is 39. So that's the answer. Question 23. Here are six number cards. Use four of them to complete the calculations. You can only use each one once. You can multiply by 10 to get 6.3. And now for a second one. 63 divided by 100 is equal to 0 0.63. We can't put 163 here because there wouldn't be anything possible for a second statement. So this is the only answer. Question 24. Jamie chooses two two-digit numbers. They're both multiples of 10. The product is 5600. What numbers could they be? So it'll be dash 0 multiplied by dash 0. It's equal to 5600. Zero. Can be 70 into 80. Actually, that's the only two numbers which are possible. 70 and 80 because they are two digit numbers which are multiples of 10. Question 25. Here are four bags containing black and white beads. Complete the following sentences. A. Probability of picking a black bead is the same from bag dash as bag dash. So bag A is four out of total seven beads. Bag B is five out of seven beads. Bag C is eight out of 14 which is equal to four out of seven beads. And bag D is 5 out of 8 beads. This is the probability of getting a black bead, by the way. So, mm -hmm. over here, bag A and bag C have the same probability. So, that's the answer. B, the best chance of picking a black bead is from bag dash, bag B. Question 26. The Rebecca is making a number pattern using counters. A, which numbers does the pattern represent? So you can see this is 1, 3, 6, 10, it goes on. These numbers are actually called triangular numbers. Because when we arrange them in dots like this, they form triangles. You can see over here, this is a triangle, 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 so like that. B, how many counters will be there in the sixth pattern? So it will be 1 over here. Add 2, we get 3. Add 3, we get 6. Add 4, we get 10. Next, we need to add 5 to get 15. That's the fifth one. Add 6 to get 21. That's the answer. Question 27. Write all the three digit numbers between 100 and 160, which are those will by 2 and not those will by 4 and those will by 5. So it should be divisible by 2 and 5, but not by 4. That means they must be multiples of 10. Only multiples of 10 can be divided by both numbers at the same time to get whole number answers. So let's check. 100 divided by 2, 50. 
100 divided by 5, 20. 100 divided by 4, though, 25. And we do not want a whole number answer. It's not 100. The same thing applies for 120, 140, and 160. So the only numbers which are there are 110, 130, and 150. That's the answer. And with that, I come to the end of my paper. Please like this video, subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends and family, and comment on how you think this video was. With that, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, signing out. Thank you. Bye.